<laughs> I'm teaching today. It's Pastor Marcy. Yay! So, um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, as we were singing that last song and Grace was prophesying, um, I did this last night and I really feel like I'm going to do it again. And um, I just feel like there, you guys feel it, there's like an atmosphere of breakthrough in the room today and just this atmosphere of celebration and so what I want you to do is just think about something that you've been like Grace was saying something you've been pressing for something that um, you, you're wanting breakthrough in it could be salvation it could be healing whatever it is I just want you to think it and we're going to decree Jesus over that you know could be breakthrough for our government could be breakthrough for the city whatever it is I want you to just think and we're gonna on the count of three we're just gonna scream Jesus we did this Saturday night and afterwards my daughter who's back teaching in the nursery was like what were you guys doing in there? Because <laughs> they heard us. So I know there's more people today, so they're going to hear us back in the nursery and back in the kids' room, and it's a, it's a good thing. So on the count of three, think about that thing that you want breakthrough in because God is here, and there is anointing for it right now. I'm going to move the microphone away. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus! All right. Okay. Woo! God is good. Okay. So um, I am teaching today, and when I was pressing into God for what I was going to teach, um, I heard very clearly that God wants you to know that he is your rock. God is your rock. And if you talk to anybody today, the conversation usually comes around to the instability in the world right now. Um, there's instability in the governments. There's instability in things around us. Um, but we would all love for God to just like reach down from heaven and just bring peace and end it all right now and just put an end to all the uncertainty. Um, but that's just not God's way. That's not what he tends to do. Um, now we have the assurance that at one point in time, God is going to do that. He's going to come back and just put an end to it all. But it's actually his mercy that he's waiting to do that because he's waiting for everyone to come into the fullness of God. He's waiting for everyone to come into the kingdom. He doesn't want one person not in the kingdom of God. And so it's actually his mercy that he's waiting to come back. But what he does promise us is that he will be with us. He will be our rock and he will be there for us to bring us in through all that uncertainty into victory. And so um, let's just explore why we call God our rock. And I wanna start in Exodus 17, one through six. At the Lord's command, the whole community of Israel left the wilderness of sin. And I actually looked that up. My Bible had like a little side note there. And the wilderness of sin was just the area around Mount Sinai. So they were in that area. And it says, don't confuse this with the English word sin. So don't confuse it with the English word sin. It's just the area around Mount Sinai. And they were moving around in that area from place to place. And eventually they camped at Rephidim. Um, but there was no water there for the people to drink. So once more, the people complained against Moses. Give us water to drink, they demanded. Quiet, Moses replied. Why are you complaining against me? And why are you testing the Lord? But tormented by thirst, they continued to argue with Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Are you trying to kill us, our children, and our livestock with thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What should I do with these people? They are ready to stone me. The Lord says to Moses, walk out in front of the people, take your staff, the one you used when you struck the water of the Nile, and call some of the elders of Israel to join you. I will stand before you on the rock at Mount Sinai, strike the rock, and water will come gushing out. Then the people will be able to drink. So Moses struck the rock as he was told, and water gushed out as the elders looked on. So in this picture, we, the story, we see our dependence on God. And we actually see our dependence on God as our rock, as the Trinity, 
God is a supernatural provider here in this story. So we see God, he told Moses, he was standing before Moses on the mountain, and he said he's going to stand on the rock. And I don't know how Moses knew which rock God was going to stand on, because <laughs> he was supposed to strike the rock that God was standing on. So maybe God gave him supernatural vis vision to see that. But um, he, God said, I will be standing on the rock in front of you. So God in this picture is active. He's alive. He's leading them. He is with them. And he is in absolute control of the situation. And that's something to remember when we feel out of control, when we feel like, like they are, like I'm starving, I'm dying, something horrible is happening. We know that God is right there and he is in control and that he can supernaturally provide. Um, it reminded me of the story last week that Pastor Mike mentioned when Jesus needed to multiply the food. There was no food and the, Israel, or the people, the disciples were freaking out like, what are we going to do? Send everybody home. And Jesus wasn't worried. He knew this story, probably, and he's like, yeah, not a problem. God's a supernatural provider. He can provide food. He can provide water. He can do it. So God is a miracle worker, and right here, he performed a miracle. God is also our protector and our refuge in times when we feel out of control. We can be grounded on who God is as our rock. God led them to this place. It wasn't an accident that they were someplace without water. He led them by a cloud by day and a fire by night, and he's completely in control. He's not there worrying like, oh no, what do I do? We took a wrong turn, and now we're somewhere where there's no water. Oh, gee, I guess, I guess we're in trouble now. No, God is completely in control. He's like, don't worry about it. I'm going to provide. So when we feel like things are out of control, we need to remember that God is a rock. He's not worried. He's in complete control of the situation. And when we press into him and stand on him as our rock, he'll give us instructions on what to do, just like he gave to Moses. And he said, go ahead, strike the rock and water is going to come out of it. And Moses was faithful and obedient. And that's exactly what happened. God was completely in control. Um, now let's look at that rock that was struck. Um, this is a symbol of Jesus, the rock was, that was struck. 1 Corinthians 10, 4 kind of shows us that. All of them drank the same spiritual water, for they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them. That rock was Christ. So we know that Jesus is a rock. We know that Jesus was struck for our salvation and our deliverance from sin and death and disease. So what did Moses told to do symbolically? Strike the rock, right? Jesus is the rock of our salvation. And what happened when he struck that rock was water came pouring out. There's another symbol, the symbol of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is shown as water often in the Bible. And after Jesus died on the cross and he was broken and struck for us, we are now able to receive the Holy Spirit, just like the Israelite children were able to receive living water. The Holy Spirit is our living water that we can depend on. And so the Holy Spirit is life-giving. He's a refresher. He's a restorer. And we all know what it's like to live in the desert. Luckily, we can just turn on our sink and water comes pouring out, right? But we know it's important when you're in the desert to have water. It's life-giving. It's something we all have to have. Just like we all need the Holy Spirit moving in our life, refreshing us, filling us with living water so that we can live through circumstances. This is God as our rock showing up showing us that he is able to provide for us. We can depend on him. Um, God is a steady place to turn to, a rock when we feel out of control. Um, he's a place that we can turn to for our salvation and a place where we can find life-giving and refreshing water for our day-to-day -day life. So we can see that God is a rock here. And you might think, like, why does God choose to compare himself to a rock? Like, that seems kind of like a strong weird kind of thing, like um, maybe we should pick a mountain instead of a rock. Um, but the nature of a rock is similar to the nature of God. A rock is solid and strong, and God is solid and strong. As a matter of fact, he is a place of refuge that we can run into. Um, God is solid and strong, and he sits up above 
all of our enemies, all of the things of the earth. He is ruling and reigning strong and in control. So Psalms 18, one through three says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock of strength in whom I will trust my shield and the strong horn of my salvation, my stronghold, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. So God is strength, he's our fortress, he's our deliverer, he's rock solid. Um, Jesus is also seated with him in heaven above all of our enemies. Jesus is our salvation. And if you continue down in that Psalm a little bit more, Psalm 18 verses 46 through 49, it says, the Lord lives, blessed be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God who avenges me and subdues the peoples under me. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up above those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violent man, therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. That word Gentiles means all the other nations in the world, just all the nations of the world. So we can see here that not only is God up above all the enemies and the things of the world, rock solid, but Jesus is seated in heavenly places, up above all things. And not only that, but he lifts us up above all of those problems and the things of the world. He lifts us up out of violent and uncertain things to be seated with him so that we rule and reign, not from an unsteady place in the world, but up with him in heaven in a place of refuge and strength. So God is our strong, rock solid God that's not movable. Um, God is also a great place, great defensive place to hide. Now, um, rocks back then were not just considered like you might see a small rock like I could pick up with my hand. When they talked about rocks, they were often talking, remember God stood on a rock, usually like a big mountain kind of rock. And so we can see in Exodus 33, 20 through 23, that God's gonna actually hide Moses in a rock. Now, Moses had asked God, I wanna see your glory. I wanna see you face to face. And this was God's response. But he said, you cannot see my face for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is a place by me and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take my hand away, I take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. So we see that God is hiding. He's giving Moses refuge in a rock. Remember we talked about the rock being Jesus. Here we see the Trinity of God again in Exodus. God's glory is passing by Moses. Where is Moses? He's standing on the rock and hidden inside the rock, representing how we are standing on God our rock and we are hidden in Jesus. And God's hand is shielding him from the glory of God and that represents the Holy Spirit's power shielding us. When Moses was standing on the rock as a symbol, we can only be in the presence of the living God by standing on Jesus, the rock of our salvation. And I looked up that word cleft, because it says not only was he standing on the rock, but God hid him in the cleft of the rock. And cleft isn't really like a word we use like all the time, like, yeah, I'm going to the cleft in the rock. Um, so what it actually is, it's a narrow opening in like the side of a mountain in a rock face. And it's so narrow that it, it usually takes a person, they can get stuck in there. They have to squeeze themselves in and out. And so if you see this picture, God is actually hiding Moses, hidden in, squeezed in the rock, which is Jesus. And we know that being in Jesus saves our lives and allows us to be in the presence of God. We are actually in Christ, hidden 
in him. And that's what allows us to be in the presence of God. We get tucked into Jesus and we have his Holy Spirit in us to protect us and guide us in the world. The Holy Spirit is our connector to God as we're hidden in Jesus. So Jesus is the rock of our salvation and it's because of his sacrifice and the protection of his blood and the power of the Holy Spirit that now, unlike Moses, we get to see God face to face. We get to be in all of his glory. We can be seated with him in heavenly places and we can stand on God as our rock to do that. So another thing about a rock is it is immovable and stable. We know that God is immovable and stable. He's trustworthy and just. Deuteronomy 32, three through four tells us this. For I proclaim in the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are justice. A God of truth without injustice, righteous and upright is he. So this is revealing the nature of God. It's revealing that he's perfect, he's just, and he's trustworthy. So we can trust in God, he's stable, and unmovable. Um, God is consistent. So it's where our saying comes from, he's my rock. She is like a rock. Have you guys ever heard that saying? I have. And what someone's saying when they say, he's a rock, she's a rock, they're saying that that person is stable, they're trustworthy, they're unmovable. When trouble comes, I can depend on that person to be there for me. They're not gonna leave me alone. And we want to place that trust in God. God is our only true rock in life because I'm a good person and I'm a pretty trustworthy, dependable person. But every once in a while, not meaning to, I disappoint somebody, I'm not there for them, I do something wrong, right? Um, we've all been there, but God is that one that is there all the time. He's trustworthy, he's dependable, he's consistent. He will never fail us, he will never let us down. When we depend on him as our rock, we can truly say he is my rock and he will not let me down. He will never disappoint me or cause me any harm. So. God is our dependable, consistent, steady, immovable rock that we want to base our lives on. The other thing about a rock is in Bible times, it was a place of habitation where they actually lived inside of homes and fortresses built into rocks like mountains again, or out of rocks. Um, Isaiah 26, one through four says in that day, Everyone in the land of Judah will sing this song. Our city is strong. We are surrounded by the walls of God's salvation. Open the gates to all who are righteous. Allow the faithful to enter. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. So they knew that like, if I'm gonna be attacked, I can build my house inside of a rock and it'll be immovable structure. It will be a fortress. It will be a place of refuge and a place of safety. I can live inside of the rock. And um, I actually got to go to the Arboretum this last week on Monday with my family. And as we were wandering down the trail, we went down this trail that we really hadn't been to before. And lo and behold, guess what there is? There's a house built inside the mountain rock. And it was just the most amazing thing because half the house was inside the rock and the other house, the other half of the house was outside of the rock and you could go inside and you could see that, wow, this house is really strong. And um, I tried to look up how old that house was and they really didn't have a lot of information about it. Um, but I know that the Arboretum was built about 1920. And so you're thinking a hundred years, not a thousand, like I said, last service, a um, hundred years. And um, it has remained there solid, steady, strong, immovable for a very long time. 
And that's what God is for us. He is our rock that we build our house on, that we build our life into, because he is immovable, he is consistent, he is strong, he is always there for us. And when we build our house in a rock like that, it stands the test of time just like that little house did. It was simple, but it standed the test of time. And that's what we wanna do with our lives. We wanna build our lives in God, and then we can stand the test of time and the storms of life. Because God is trustworthy, he's our refuge, he's our salvation, and he's our place of peaceful habitation where we can live. And Jesus told us this in Matthew 7, 24. He said there's only really two foundations you can build your life on. You can build your life on the rock, build your life on rock, or you can build your life on the shifting, shifting sand of this world. And he tells us, build it on the rock, like we've been talking about, because it's steady. So Matthew 7, 24 through 27 says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes, in torrents and the floodwaters rise and winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So Jesus tells us here that if we follow him, we follow his teaching, we follow his leading, we follow his guiding, we are building our house on the rock of God. We are building and grounding ourselves in the kingdom of God, and we may experience the storms of life. I always say that it's the one promise in the Bible that nobody's like, yes, I'm going to stand on that promise. You will experience trials, tribulations, <laughs> problems in life. It's something God said is going to happen. He didn't promise that we would live in perfect peace all the time. We can have inner peace, but he said there will be storms of life. But this is the promise, he says, they will not destroy you. They will not destroy you. They will not cause you to fall. Because when you have God as your rock, as your firm and solid, trustworthy, protective foundation, you are guarded from that and he is going to get you through. He's gonna strengthen you and bring you through. However, if you build on the foundation of this world, governments, jobs, people, our own abilities, those things are shifting sand. And at some point in time, they're gonna fail. At some point in time, they're gonna shift. At some point in time, they're gonna move. And then we end up falling. Um, they move constantly. And we don't want to build on those things. We want to build on God, who is that dependable rock that never moves, never shakes, never um, destroys, never goes away. Um, God is our solid, firm foundation. And when we stay grounded in him, then we make it through those storms. So um, story of when that happened to me, I think we've all had times we could say, like all of a sudden something caught you off guard. It wasn't something you were expecting. The sand seemed to be shifting around you. My, one of my things is when I was teaching full time in uh, public school, which was a long time ago before I came to work here, um, they were having a layoff. And not only were they having a layoff, they had just met in secret session and changed the, the rules of tenure. So it used to be if you taught five years, then your contract was good and you couldn't um, get fired. And they had just changed that to, they can let you go anytime that they want to. And the school district was going through a recession and they decided to close down two different schools. And all of a sudden, we all had to apply for our jobs, again, in the middle of the school year for the next year. Whether we had been there for 10 years, two years, one year, it did not matter. We all had to reapply for our jobs. And so that was something that took me by surprise. That was some storms, that was some shifting sand. I thought my job was stable, I thought it was a given, and all of a sudden, now I'm having to reapply for that job. And I remember at that time, fear would like hit me all of a sudden and be like, well, what is gonna happen? If I don't have a job, I can't keep my house payment. I can't feed my kids. I can't, you know, like, and all these things hit you. And it was in those moments, God would remind me, 
you're grounded on the rock. You're hidden in me. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to go down that path of bunny trails that leads into a pit of depression and sorrow and victim mentality. You have to look down and know that you are grounded in me. And one of the things God told me during that time is they are not in control of your life. The people in the school district making those decisions are not in control of your life. You're not in control of your life right now. Because if I was, I wouldn't have put myself in that situation. God said, guess who's in control? I'm in control. And he kept grounding me back in that. I'm in control. I have a plan for your life. I think Carol read that in our offering verse today. I have a plan for your life. I have a good plan for your life. Yep, this is happening, but I am in control. So he kept saying, look at me. Ground yourself in me who is your rock. And um, I, I kept my job. I reapplied and I kept my job and everything was just fine. But weathering that fear was, I way I weathered it, was by standing grounded in the rock in our firm foundation. And that's what we can do. In those times of trouble, we can remind ourselves to look at our foundation. My foundation is not my job. My foundation is Jesus. My foundation is God and God is in control. And when we do that, we are strengthened by his Holy Spirit to stand strong and not be moved by those storms and not be moved by those shifting sand. When your life is grounded in God, the most amazing thing happens. Those storms come, that sand shifts under your feet, but you come out of it stronger than you were before. You come out of it because you are um, grounded in who God is and you become stronger through the process. And then when the next storm comes, you're like, oh yeah, I remember, I'm grounded in God. It's all gonna be okay. I don't have to be afraid. And it makes you stronger every single time you ground yourself in your foundation of God and who he is for you in those moments. So I said, you wanna ground yourself in God. Now, that's like something that Christians say. Every single culture, every single job has its own like lingo and being grounded in God is Christian lingo. Like when you're going through a hard time, your friend in church might say, that's okay, brother, be grounded in God. And you're like, okay, how do I do that? <laughs> and so I'm going to show you some keys, some things to, you can do to ground yourself in God. And the first one is something that we've been talking about, which is knowing that Jesus is our rock and he is a firm foundation. Acts 4, 10 through 12 says, Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which became the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So one way to be grounded is to know Jesus is a firm foundation. He is my salvation. He is my savior. He is who I'm building my life on. He is the one that I can count on and depend on no matter what is going on around me. I am rooted and grounded and solid on Jesus. And that's where my life is being built from. Um, so knowing that. Another way to ground yourself in, in God as our rock is to know that nothing can separate you from that. You've been saved, you're filled with God, you have a firm foundation, and then nothing can move you from that foundation but yourself. So Romans 8, 35 through 39 says, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or are hungry or are destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. I love that list. Like you could add whatever you want to that list. Like, does this mean if I'm struggling financially that God doesn't love me anymore? No. Does it mean if I'm sick, all of a sudden God doesn't love me anymore? Nope. Does it mean if I'm going through some hard times and I've lost my job that God doesn't love me anymore? Nope. And that's what it answers in verse 37. 
It says, no, despite all of these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. So it says like all that list of things, you can add whatever you want to that list. That does not mean that God doesn't love you. In a matter of fact, it means that overwhelming victory is yours. So if we never have any problems, we never get victory. But when we walk through those problems and we're grounded in the rock, we come to overwhelming victory through Christ who loves us. And then it goes on in verse 38. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So nothing can separate us from the love of God. <laughs> There's a whole long list there. And basically it comes down to nothing can separate us from the love of God. And it is the love of God that is going to bring us into overwhelming victory. So that's something you can stand on. That's a sure promise that you can ground yourself in, that nothing can separate me from salvation. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. He's always working to bring me into victory. So yes, you're gonna experience storms of life. Yes, th bad things are going to happen, but as long as you stay in the love of God, as long as you stay grounded in who you are as a child of God and stand firmly founded in Jesus, your rock of your salvation, you are going to make it through into overwhelming victory, not just victory, but overwhelming victory. So that's something you can ground yourself in. It's something you can stand on is that promise. I am in the love of God and I'm going to make it through into overwhelming victory. So another thing we can ground ourselves in knowing that is trust and hope. Yeah, I'm going through a hard time right now, but I trust that God's going to get me through. I hope that God is going to get me through. And that word hope isn't like, oh, maybe if God's in a good mood today, he might help me out. That word hope is like that assurance. Like I know that God is gonna come through for me. I know he's my rock. I know he's my stable place of refuge. I know that he's gonna bring me through into victory. It's that kind of hope. So Romans 9, 32 through 33 says, why not? Because they were trying to get right with God by keeping the law instead of by trusting in him. They stumbled over the great rock in their path. God warned them of this in scripture when he said, I am placing a stone in Jerusalem that makes people stumble, a rock that makes them fall. But anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. And that rock is Jesus. And if we put our trust in Jesus, we will never be disgraced. But if we put our trust in other things, laws, government, the world, other people, our own abilities, eventually we're gonna stumble and fall. But if we put our trust in Jesus, who is our great rock, he's gonna make sure that we will never be disgraced. When you tell people, your friends and coworkers, yeah, things aren't going well, but God's got me. He's gonna get me through this. God promises you're not gonna be disgraced by that. He's not gonna let you down. He's going to bring you into victory. And so you want to stand strong in God, being grounded in that, Put your hope in that, not the kind of hope that's, oh, I hope this happens someday, but that assurance that God is going to get me through. I trust him to get you through. He will make sure that you get through and are never disgraced. Psalm 62, five through eight says, let all that I am wait quietly before God for my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. My victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. Oh, my people, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. 
I love that. It says that when we are grounded in the rock of God, our enemies can't really reach us. They can be wind blowing around us. They can be sand shifting underneath our feet, but they can't reach us because we are grounded in the rock of God. And it even says we can not only be grounded in God, but we can pour out our heart to him. God is not far away. Remember, we're seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We're sitting right at the right hand of the Father. So it's not like, oh, please, God, help me if you're in a good mood. Or, you know, we're not praying up to God. We're turning to Daddy God, our Father, and saying, hey, I need some help here. I need to get through this. Will you be there? Will you help me? And God is right there. We can pour out our heart to him. And he is just and faithful, we can trust him that he is going to help us get through whatever we're going through. So we ground ourselves in trust and hope. Another way to ground ourselves is in the word of God and his promises. God gave us a whole book, the Bible, in case you were wondering, a whole book full of his promises. And it says in there that every single one of those promises is for us. And so we can ground ourselves in knowing God is going to answer every single one of those problems for us, or every one of those promises, problems too, but promises. Psalms 46, one through seven says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be moved and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place, the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And I love that. I love that it says, though, everything we see around us is shaking. They talk about mountains. They talk about rivers. They talk about governments. They talk about everything is shaking. But where is God? God is in the middle of us, in the midst of that. He is in us. He is making us so that in the midst of everything shaking and moving, we are not moved. We are firmly planted on God as our rock, and we are not moved. And it says, God will help us. He said, it's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. God is there right with us in the middle of everything shaking, in the middle of everything being uncertain, and he is there with us saying that I'm right here to help you. I am with you. And so in every circumstance, every storm of life, God is with us and his Holy Spirit is in us. And God is not only with us, he's there to help us. He's releasing angelic armies to fight on our behalf. He is there present and helping. He is fulfilling his promises to us. And that allows us to be grounded in God. And I was thinking about this and um, a good example of this, of God being there in the middle of everything shaking is when Jesus was dying on the cross. And when Jesus was dying on the cross, Everything shook, literally. <laughs> the rocks shook, the mountains shook, the world shook. It became dark. And in that moment, if you were standing there in that moment, it might seem like the enemy's winning. Everything's dark, everything's shaking. And Jesus, who was supposed to be the salvation of everybody, just died. And so I think if you're one of the disciples at that moment, you're like, what is going on? I had all these promises from God that he was going to rescue us, that he was going to save us. He's going to be our deliverer. And he just died. But it is in the darkness that God moves the most, even though we can't see him. And in that darkness, God was moving and he was creating the greatest victory that ever happened in all eternity, where Jesus rose from the grave the next morning. Well, not the next morning, it took three days, right? Three days. And sometimes it takes longer than we think. We want God to act right then, right now. God deliver me, save me right now. But we have this assurance and this promise that God is working on our behalf, even in the darkness. And even though it might take three days, even though it might take a week, even though it might take a month, even though it might take a year, 
we know that God is in the middle of it and he is moving us towards victory, just like he did. Jesus rose from the grave. He rose to the greatest victory of all eternity where he conquered sin and death and disease and he rose victorious. And that's what God does. In Psalm 46, it says that God is in the midst of her and he will help her at the break of dawn. And the break of dawn is the darkest hour. It's right before the sun comes up and it's in that darkest hour that God is moving. And then when the light comes up and the sun comes up and it dawns, we can see what he'd been accomplishing that whole entire time. And that's what God does in our lives too. When it looks the darkest, when it looks like, where is God in the middle of all of this? He's a present help at that time. He's moving on your behalf, moving you into victory. And what do you need to do? You just need to stay grounded in faith on that. You need to trust him, put your hope in him, and know that he is about to bring you into your greatest victory. He is moving on your behalf. And you will see in the light of day what he has done. And it will be amazing because that's who our God is. Okay, so we just talked about how to be grounded in his promises. And now we're talking about how he's going to be grounded, how we want to be grounded in his faithfulness. That's what I was just talking about. God is faithful to answer every single one of his promises for us. So remember those Israelites that were whining way back at the beginning of our story? God's brought us here to die. <laughs> um, God made a promise to them. He made a promise to them that he was going to bring them through into this promised land that was going to be amazing and flowing with provision and milk and honey. And, and it was just going to be this wonderful place to live. Um, and he did. He kept that promise. Joshua 21, 43 through 45 says, So the Lord gave to Israel all the land that he had sworn to give to their ancestors. And they took possession of it and settled there. And the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had solemnly promised to their ancestors. None of their enemies could stand against them, for the Lord helped them conquer all their enemies. Not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came true. That's something we can ground ourselves in, that God is faithful to his promises. Now, it wasn't right away. It took 40 plus years. <laughs> there was some little stops and swerves along the way. Um, it didn't come the way that they had planned it to come. I'm sure when they left Egypt, they're thinking, yep, we're going to the promised land, straight and narrow path right there. But that's not the way it happened. It happened wandering around for 40 plus years. And it came through battles. They had to fight. But it says in that verse that God helped them conquer all their enemies. And that's something we can stand and ground ourselves in, that I might have to fight the enemy a little bit to get what God has promised me, but God is going to help me conquer all of my enemies. It also came through supernaturally, God providing for them, like the water and the manna. And so sometimes God will just supernaturally provide for our needs. And sometimes he'll help us win those battles. But what we want to ground ourselves in is no matter what circumstance, God is always faithful to fulfill every single promise to us. And we just want to stay grounded in that. It may not come in the timing that I want. It might not come in the way that I want. I might have to battle for it a little bit, but God is going to bring me into victory. And so I want to build my foundation on that as God is the rock who I am resting in, who I am firmly planted in, who I'm building my life in, who is in control to bring me into victory every single time. So that's what I wanted to share today about God as our rock. And I see Todd back there. I think he's going to give me some music <laughs> um, to play. I'm going to go ahead and pray with you. Now, um, you can, we're going to press into this a little bit, go into some Holy Spirit encounters. So um, if you want to stay sitting down, that is perfectly fine. If you feel more comfortable standing up and you've been like sitting for a while now and you want to get some circulation moving, go ahead and stand up however you feel comfortable. We're going to ground ourselves in God as our rock.
first right now, we're just going to pray together. And we're talking about Jesus as our rock, our salvation and our deliverer. And I don't know everybody here, and I don't know if everybody has made that choice to be on that firm, solid foundation of Jesus and everything that he's done. And it's really, really simple. Um, I teach kids church all the time. And the Bible says that if we confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord, then we will be saved. So together as a church today, we're gonna just make sure that we are all grounded in Jesus as the rock of our salvation. We're gonna pray together right now and you can repeat after me. Jesus, I believe you are the son of God that died on the cross for my salvation and rose again to life and victory. I accept the free gift of salvation and I choose to be firmly grounded in you. Please come into my heart and change my life. Amen. And if you did pray that for the first time, if you could just let somebody know on your way out, we love to hear that people are choosing Jesus. They're choosing to be grounded in who God is. And we just wanna welcome you into our family here at Love Gospel Church. Yeah, thank you, Lord. And I just want you to see yourself right now standing on a rock a big rock, like a mountain rock, that's firm and steady and trustworthy and immovable, and that's Jesus. And I want you to look at the shifting sand around you, maybe the winds blowing around you, and those storms of life might just be raging just a little bit. And you might be feeling some of those problems today. You might come in, have come in feeling some of those problems. But right now I want you to just look down and see Jesus is your rock. You are grounded, you are firm in who you are in Christ. You are in him, you are immovable, you are solid, you are standing until your victory comes. And right now the Holy Spirit is just strengthening you He's strengthening you with the strength of a rock. He's strengthening you to be immovable. Though everything around you might shake and shift and blow, you are standing firmly grounded in God who is firmly in control of every situation. And he is bringing you through that situation into victory where you are stronger, you are mighty, you are empowered by the Holy Spirit into victory. You are launched into victory right now in Jesus name. And we were talking how we are seated in heavenly places in Jesus. It is through what Jesus did on the cross that we are able to see God face to face. So I want you to just see yourself right now in heaven, right at the right hand of Father God. You're not far away. He's not far away. He's a present help in your time of trouble. You are far above those problems. You are far above the things of life that might get you down and try to pull you down. You are high above them right now, seated next to God. I want you to turn to your father, daddy, who cares about every single one of your needs. And I just want you to whisper to him right now, daddy, God, this is what I need your help with. I need you to be a rock for me in this situation. I need your promises to be filled in this situation. And I want you to take that problem and hold it in your hand. 
might be a, a loved one that you've been praying for salvation for. It might be a sickness or disease or a body pain that you've been having that's tormenting you. It might be tormenting thoughts of fear and worry and, and the things of this world, problems. It might be financial lack, whatever it is. It might be a new job that you're contending for. It might be our nation, the United States, whatever it is that you want God to intervene for, I want you to hold it in your hand. And then I want you to give it into God's hands. Just pass it right on to him because he's really the one that's in control. He's really the one that's gonna bring breakthrough. He's really the one that's gonna bring victory. The creator of the universe is your daddy and he cares for you. He is a firm, solid rock foundation. Nothing is moving him. The situation that you're putting in his hands is not above him. It's not something he is powerless to act on. He is more than enough. And he's gonna bring that suddenly, that dawn moment where you're gonna see that every single step along the way, he's been active and moving on your behalf. And God, as we surrender those things to you right now, we thank you ahead of time, God. We give you all the glory, praise, and honor that you are gonna bring every single person from where they are into breakthrough and victory over every single situation that they put in your hands. And I just felt the Holy Spirit say like, some people might be saying like, can I put more than one thing? And it's yes, yes, <laughs> whatever you wanna give to him, you just keep surrendering it, keep surrendering it, keep surrendering it. If it's more than, more, God is more than enough. God is more than enough for every single problem that you have. He says, I'm a big, big God and I'm a big, big daddy. And I have big, big hands that can hold it all and take care of it all for you. It's okay. So God, we thank you that you are the victory and you are the God of breakthrough. And we thank you right now that you're releasing victory to every single person here in Jesus name.